Albert, darling, you're later than I expected. We've only got sausage and cheese tonight. What is it? We need to talk. Has something happened? Oh, no, nothing. Sorry, no. I spent most of the day staring out the window at work, looking at trains. <laughs> and I started to think about an object and how much energy it had. Can I explain it to you? Of course you can. But first, dinner, mm -hmm. food and talk. I think the gods are laughing at me. <laughs> Monsieur Lavoisier. You are, if my eyes do not deceive me, consuming only milk this evening. First you had a glass of milk, now you are eating a bowl of milk. Will you next move on to a plate of milk? Your precise observations commend you as a lady of scientific curiosity, mademoiselle. Most unusual. As you seek knowledge, so I shall dispense it. For the last five weeks, I have taken nothing but milk. Good God, man. I would rather die than fast on milk for five weeks. Are you in the grip of some horrendous ailment? On the contrary. I am investigating the effects of diet on health. I'm sure with the greatest of respect to a member of the Royal Academy of Sciences, your gut must think your throat has been slit. <laughs> Whereas your gut count is no doubt petitioning the Academy for a widening of your throat. Marianne, how dare you insult the Count? <laughs> Don't forget what the Count offers. Not just marriage, but think of how you will be introduced to all the salon. <laughs> you will be the toast of Paris. Would it not be a shame, madame, to burden you with the duties of matrimony before you have had a chance to experience your curiosity for nature? Shall we all go through? It's getting rather hot in here. Madame. What will happen if I take a bar of copper or iron and leave it outside in the rain for months on end? Madame Lavoisier. Mm. <laughs> Monsieur Lavoisier. The metals. <laughs> what will become of them? Is this a verbal examination? Prior to an examination proper, mm. sir? I merely <laughs> seek the truth. Then you toy with me, Monsieur, for you know the truth. The copper will become covered in a green verdigris, and the iron will rust. I believe the term is uh, calcined. Most impressive, my charming wife. <laughs> but let me press you further. Mm -hmm. When the metal rusts, does it get heavier or lighter? Why, sir, I think you mean to trap me. Oh. And perhaps this little butterfly should land and allow me to take a closer look. Every last citizen in France of sensible age knows that when a metal rusts, it wastes away, it gets lighter and eventually disappears. Ah, but... Ah, stop. I have not finished. Contain yourself, sir. There is more. In a recently published pamphlet by a brilliant young chemist, Antoine Lavoisier demonstrates that the iron combines with the air. It, in fact, becomes heavier. Most impressive. I intend... Now, whatever you intend, monsieur, I intend to be by your side. I will learn all I can about your science and become your worthy colleague. Then let me show you how the iron combines with the air to form such a delicate union. Tomorrow, monsieur. Tomorrow. If I rode on a beam of light? What? A beam of light?
By what method do you propose to ride on this beam of light? As a method is not important. Let us just imagine we two are young, Shh. radical, bohemian experimenters, hand in hand, on a journey to the outer reaches of the universe, and we are riding on the front of a wave of light. <laughs> I really don't know what you are suggesting, Herr Einstein. Do you wish to hold my hand or ridicule me? Ridicule you? No, never. I merely want you to help me to understand. What would we see, as you think, um, if we were together and we sped up and up until we caught up to the front of a beam of light? It was Einstein's relentless pursuit of light which would bring about a revolution in science. With light, he would reinvent the universe and find a hidden pathway that would unite energy and mass. And nothing fascinated the young Einstein more than light. in half an hour. Oh, let me think. Professor Weber and his life-draining monologue. Or you, Mozart, and James Clark Maxwell. We can't. We'll get a warning. Our project is too precious to waste time listening to those dull ads. Come with me. We'll read Maxwell <laughs> and think about the electromagnetic theory of light. <laughs> oh, why, my dear little Johnny, how you enchant a lady. Monsieur, you are young. I hope that soon you will judge me for my own merits, or lack of them. But do not look upon me as an appendage to this great general, or that renowned scholar. I am in my own right a whole person, responsible to myself alone for all that I am, all that I say, all that I do. Emily! Emily, you are being absurd. Why ascribe to an object a vague and immeasurable force like vis viva? It is a return to the old ways. It is the occult! When movement commences, you said it is true that a force is produced which did not exist until now. Think of our bodies. To have free will, we must be free to initiate motion. So all life this is asking is where does all this force come from? In your case, my dear, the force, I am sure, is primeval. Oh, you're infuriating. You hide behind wit and sarcasm. You only think you understand Newton. You're incapable of understanding Leibniz. You're provocateur. Everything you do is about something else and makes trouble for you. Criticize this, denounce that. Are you capable of discovering something of your own? I discovered you! But I wanted to hire a maid so I can get back and finish my degree. Now I will never pass my dissertation. Oh, come, come, my pretty little duck. All will be fine. You will see. How will be fine, Albert? Do I have to just wait another year until you are promoted? Come on. Come on. Come on, my boy. Oh. Oh, we'll be fine. Oh, we'll be fine. You'll we'll see. Energy equals mass times the square of the speed of light. <laughs> Would you like me to check your mathematics? 